Yep. I did it again. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. I don't have a problem. You have a problem, guys. This here's, uh, this here's, it's a dirt bike. <laughs> it's not just any dirt bike. Obviously, those who know, those who don't, let me cue you in. This here's a 1985 Husqvarna CR. That's right. Stole it from the Hondas. They actually battled over the CR acronym. What is it called? I don't know. They battled over that title, though, the CR, for a long time. It went on through the 2000s, and eventually someone gave up, named uh, Husky. So, guys, this is a 1985 Husky CR 500. Now, this thing is really freaking cool. Uh, this was actually previously owned by famed Supercross star Mickey Diamond. Okay, that's not true. That's, that's a lie, actually. Well... Here you guys go. The 1985 Husqvarna CR500. Look at that giant tank. I mean, these things were meant to hold fuel. Go the extra distance. Now, I will say this. I'm not 100% sure if this thing is a CR model. There also was, a, I think, a XC or a DX or something like that. There's a cross-country model. And this might be the CR. This might be one of the desert ones. But I think it's a CR, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So... First off, she is just a real peach. I mean, steel braided hoses, not stock, aftermarket. They came with Olean shocks, OEM. Nowadays, that's a, that's a pretty nice little thing to have. Back then, it was actually kind of standard equipment for anything Husqvarna came with Oleans. Um, again, with the steel braided hoses, we were not going to wear through those things at all with any sort of abrasions. Um, a kill switch grips that are absolutely melting. I mean, like, when you grab them, they stick. Yeah, they're nasty. We got some, uh, some sort of defecation on the bar there. More melted grips, which is fine. Honestly, you could run them right now. Your hands will stick nice. Um, thought this was kind of cool because... It says Magura lever, right? Now, these things came with Magura brakes. This is an OEM lever. Now, not saying it was the original to the bike, but it's correct. There's a Magura logo there. This vehicle does not conform to the US vehicle safety standards and is used for racing only. Race bike, right? It's from Odishog. Sweden. Um, some VIN numbers, Husqvarna 1, and then the part, or the VIN number. Um, what else can I show you guys? The paint's flaking off the forks. The rotor has enough rust on it to be part of the, the booty from the Titanic. I mean, check that out, right? But the chrome on the forks, though, however, I mean, let's give these things a wipe, is good. So this thing was stored kind of indoor-outdoor. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, this bike was in a shed, but the roof collapsed over the bike. And it stayed like that for many, many years. He said about 19 years this thing has been off the dirt. 19. Um, that's a lot of time. The chain needs a little bit of oil, and she's good to go again. Um, side frame was... Looks like maybe a MIG, yeah, MIG'd back into its original location, sort of. But guys, come on, and this, this is my favorite part. This is a big trucker's mud flap, right? This is not, that's not period correct, or correct at all. Uh, it's actually, what up, bro? He knows. Um, yeah, trucker mud flap, interesting. So, let's go get this thing in the shop garage or whatever, let me go through the parts that we got on it. Talk about some plans. Oh my gosh. It's, yeah, but it's, 
Look at that. Look, just look onto it. Can you guys even see it with your eyes? Just there's sand everywhere. <sighs> but assembled and in great condition, these things are extremely valuable. And we're not going to let it slip through the fingers just that easy. Welcome to the Shop Garage Whatever, guys. So this is my empire of dirt where if you don't know the channel at all, welcome. Thanks for snapping onto the video and checking it out. But here I do things with dirt bikes. I got a lot of dirt bikes. I love dirt bikes. I got a lot of big boards. Big boards is one of my things. It's not my only thing, but it's, it's one of my things. And uh, today, guys, we're adding another to the collection of Husqvarna's. So this is a Husqvarna cross-country racing 430, which is great. I mean, this bike is phenomenal, actually. It runs really, really good. Um, got an issue I got to deal with with the Kickstarter gear. Possibly snapping in half. <laughs> no, it backfired on me when I was kicking it, and uh, that's a future video. But with that Kickstarter gear fix, and I fixed the timing... Some previous knucklehead that owned it advanced that timing all the way. I mean, like, it was sparking mid-stroke mid on the piston. It was, like, way too advanced. So we put it back to stock, and uh, I haven't tried to kick it over since because said Kickstarter gear is broken. But anyways, guys, the 89 CR500 behind me is on two wheels. I'm going to get it out of the way because, as I said in the last video, you're not going to see any more from that bike until we do the reveal. So... Let's just get this, this is not, I was gonna call it a turd bucket, but it's definitely not a turd bucket. It's a, a racing bike, you know? <laughs> I love race bikes. I've asked it in my videos in the past and you could chime in now too. Now you see the bikes on lines, right? That says, uh, you know, race bike and stuff like that on the, on the Google search, you know, now, does a bike that's been raced constitute as a race bike? Or, like for instance, if you race a Honda CRF 230 or a KLX 140, isn't it now a race bike? So you could advertise it as such as being a race bike online? I don't know. I don't know. That's a, I think you guys need to debate that down in the down in the comments down there, and I'll uh, I'll peek in and see what everyone says, but. Look at this, 89 Resto Mod. It's on our own two wheels and that's all you're gonna see. It's me just getting out of the way so we get that Husqvarna turd up here. Gosh, why are these grips so sticky? Like, how does that even, how does that even? Oh, slug bug. I can't believe, I can't believe this chain actually rolls like it. It might be salvageable. No, no, we're not going to do that. Guys, pretty excited about this old turd. Like, I mean, let's be honest. Dying breed. The last of it. There just ain't no such thing anymore as a Husqvarna 500 two-stroke. Well, unless you do one of those cool BRC kits onto, uh, so my hand doesn't get sticky. Unless you do one of those BRC kits, you know, that's, but, oh, yeah, it's heavy. Let's, uh, let's get some gravity, um, in between the sang and the ground. And, uh, it's cold out. <laughs> so if I seem a little, I don't know, cold, it's because it is, it's like 32 degrees Fahrenheit for you non-Americans the basically everywhere else in the world other than United States but 37 degrees Fahrenheit it's like uh cold so yeah so truth be told I've actually owned this thing for a little bit now I'll just say a little bit and it's been in my backyard because there's no room in the shop garage or whatever, because there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 bikes in here in a two car garage, now 16. But that's how we do it, guys. We don't, hey, you know, if you're gonna go big or if you're gonna go home, 
go go bigger go bigger go big bigger uh this thing guys i mean it's so freaking 100 percent original except for our i think he just threw the braided lines from harbor freights or auto zones or car quest or don't know um it obviously has miles not saying this thing is like og oh, super low hours craigslist sad you know we've all no cracks in the tank. A bonus. Yeah, it's a it's a dirt bike. So but let's uh let's grab these other parts though, because this 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 is where it starts to tell the tale of stories. Is that the sentiment? This is where oh frozen leaves. It's cold. Did I say that? So other than this thing was packed with sand when I got it. Another big issue. Can you guys tell? I'll give you a couple minutes. Can you guys? Okay, yeah. It's got a giant hole in it. The it's pinched pretty tight. So I'm, I'm gonna need to run my blowout kit on this after I patch that. So I'm not gonna patch that in this video because I honestly don't know if we're gonna get started. Um, there's actually a big big issue that's kind of holding us back from starting it today and unless i got extremely creative with uh, permatex or something like that i don't think it's going to run ever in this configuration again let me show you so this intake boot that is cracked big time and if i tried to start that this thing would just hang wide open i mean just it would full pinned probably blow up uh <laughs> let's pull this was the exhaust plug here good to see how clean it is there and dirty is here let's uh let's give a little gander can you you guys can't see anything <laughs> let me get a light let's get up here so there is a piston in there Woo. but come on light She's a little hashed, wouldn't you say? But it is complete-ish. What is on the left side over there? There's a big line on the left side. You guys see that line? That's gnarly. I can't tell if that's a reflection or giant crease in it. Huh. Anyways, it does have a piston. It doesn't necessarily mean that the bore is going to be perfect at all actually so here's here's the thing i got a lot of projects that deserve my attention before this after the 89 cr500 uh miller racing engine build is done which it's more wheels i got the suspension off obviously uh, that's borrowed wheels on that i got to build a front wheel still graphics plastics and it's done like it's it's ready to ride right now but um after that one's done we got a 91 to build we also have another 89 to build and this needs to fall somewhere in there so what i need to do today is i need to figure out what the what the heck what the heck are we gonna do and how are we gonna build this thing with as few of parts oh this microphone is just against me today what's going on you need to talk to somebody how's it going we need to we just need to figure out there i mean there's sand everywhere like what the heck it was it was literally in the fallon nevada it was that's where it was stored and it saw all all the weather rain wind dust storms all of it so um yeah, I need to start going over this thing. So, I mean, primarily, obviously, top end. It's, I mean, at a, a minimum, right? Um, let's, I'm scared. I'm scared only because, it, oh, it's grindy. Probably shouldn't be doing this, but it's got to come apart. But she rotates freely, willingly-ish. And um, 
it has very, let's be honest, very little compression for a 500. I mean, that's the spark plugs in right now and that kicks over similar to like a 200 or 125 or something like that. Um, so beyond the piston, so I, I mean, it's, that's if I'm lucky, I mean lucky, because this thing has no coolant in it right now. Right now, the caps off of it, there's no coolant in it. That coolant did not just evaporate because the environment told it to. The coolant, I believe, is in the bottom end now because these water pump seals, they eventually rot. And I'm hoping it came, all of it came out of the uh, bottom drainage at the bottom of the water pump, the weep hole, and it didn't find its way into the case. One way to find that out is uh, the pull. Well, it's not a dipstick, but it is a oil plug. Yeah. And there's just a bunch of sand around this too. All right. I mean, let me get my, ooh, that is just, ooh. I wish we had smell of vision going here. That is pure hypoid gear oil and no water at all in sight. So that is great. That is great news. Um, oh, I'll get you guys a close up too. So you, so, you, so you believe me. Let's get my thing in order here. So, yeah, you guys can't see beyond that, but it is not. It's green, and the light is actually making it look like it's kind of creamy. What it's, it's not, trust me. It's just, and the smell, it smells like hypoid gear oil. If you know what hypoid gear oil smells like, it's horrible. Can we get a focus in here? This is the only flashlight I have, unfortunately. But you're just going to have to take my word for it that that puddle down there in the bottom is not milk. It's just yellow, dark brown, hypoid gear oil, which is the most incorrect kind of oil that you can ever use inside this bike, but it's, it's in there. It's definitely in there. So, so with that in mind, you know, no water has ingested itself into the bottom end makes me a little bit more happy that it's not going to be contaminated and nasty, you know, rusted parts and whatnot. So we're going to put this cap back into place. But, I mean, I still think for really good measure and what this bike deserves, I think it needs to come apart all the way. I mean, bare cases, you know, re coat the cases. And I've always seen these things. So let's get into let's get into the plans for this thing, right? Because you guys have seen this bike before, similar, right? On Kaplan's channel, maybe a couple other ones over in Europe. A lot more popular over in Europe. Um, but the plans. So I've only seen bikes like this that have been just restored. And for good reason, they fetch a pretty decent penny fully restored. Now, as far as like restore goes, I don't know if this is gonna be a candidate for a full restoration. Now, granted, these are the original steel Husqvarna handlebars on this thing. Things like that, unobtainium is just not even the word. It's unfathomable. You will not find stock Husqvarna bars from 1985 anymore. Steel, it just doesn't happen. So, but a lot of those things, same, <laughs> a lot of those same things can be said though for a lot of the components that we need. Now, like I said, we did get the plastics, I'll show you guys. We actually got, we got uh, two air boxes because one has a better lid on it. I'm just gonna bring a whole bucket in. I don't think you guys need to see the rear fender, but here's the rear fender. It's, it says Utah International. Never actually seen a Utah brand fender before. Have you guys ever seen a Utah brand? Like, see if you can lock your, Utah, Utah brand rear fender. I've never in my life, and that's the first time I've noticed that. Utah International. Huh, I'm gonna have to look that up, but that's the rear fender that we got with it. A bike in a bucket, a bucket of a bike. We got two different air boxes here because one has 
a good boot. Um, this one's got a nice air box on it. And I think the boot, yeah, the boot's been repaired. This one is completely just rotted off, full of sand. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a going theme with this thing. That's definitely been repaired, but looks like it might still work. Let's go down in the box here. The muffler that's giant. I mean, big and then snapped off bracket. I mean, what do you expect? You can't see through it. Plugged with probably sand. I like this though. How many sheet metal screws do you need to hold in the spark dresser? How many? All of them. So that can needs to be restored. This thing needs to be gutted, repacked. It's nice he threw these in a grocery bag for me. You know, you got radiator louvers for that side because that side is on it so radiator louver things like this guys are just extremely valuable in the long run uh, to have uh counter shaft sprocket cover goes the other side because husqvarna was weird and put everything on the other side i mean just another one i didn't think it had it this is the brake lever protector for the front brake Magura brand. Freaking cool. Um, number plate. Unfortunately, it's broken off. It used to come down over here and then go up. Well, it don't do that no more. But look at, look at, want to talk about period correct numbers and stuff? Like, Oh, that just, that is so cool. That is so cool. Nine, number nine Q. I hope the original owner is watching this. He's just going, that's my bike. Um, missing, but not missing radiator louver for this side. Husqvarna, like, let me just say this. You see how I just slid that piece up in there? There's like, I gotta say, I've worked on every modern-ish two-stroke, 1980 three and up and one thing that's always impressed me about the Husqvarna's is their finish is their fit and finish of everything this piece see that little ridge up on the top right there no you can't see kind of there's a ridge right there at the top there's actually a cutout in the gas tank that this slides up into with pressure it holds it there and now all the bolts for the radiator I mean, it's just, it's something that Husqvarna always was known for, and it's fantastic. We do have the seat for it, which I have down here. Done in a Corinthian, what was it? Corinthian leather. It's like a crushed Corinthian leather. Yeah, this is the seat. I, didn't, I mean, I know it's not OEM, but there's foam in it, and it's, it's all there. Um, so we do have that going for us also. I mean, guys, are you seeing it yet? Or am I just totally on my own? Cause this bike, this deserves to come back. This deserves a second chance at life and prosperity. And you know, it deserves to just to stay. It deserves to stay in the world. 500 500 cc's guys so if you're not knowing again of a lot about these things i'll be completely honest i'm not either but i'm gonna learn up i'm gonna learn up on this thing we're gonna break into this bike and we're gonna totally figure out everything that we got to do and uh, get this thing running because it's just it's so much of it's a peach i mean it's an absolute peach and it's is that first? We'll just. Are you serious? Oh, there it goes. You know, let's just. There's first. Neutral. Second. That is a long throw for each gear. Four. Six. What? Am I correct? 
let's see. Let's go back up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this must be the desert model. This, it must be not the Supercross. I got, did I miss a gear? One, up, two, three, four, five, six, six speed. Wow. Okay. I mean, you guys can uh, correct me down in the comments if the CR model also came five speed or if it was also six speed. But dude, can you imagine a 500cc two stroke in six gear? Wow! Like, that just sounds dangerous. The spokes are attached. They, uh, I'm not ready for any big senders, but, uh, guys, um, so. I really just wanted to introduce you to this thing. I wanted to talk to you about it. I want to hear your plans for it down below. I was thinking resto mod, meaning that we use a little bit of modern parts to make this thing uh, wiggle again. But honestly, uh, I just got to see what's available and what I could come up with. Um, these things are just that freaking rare where we need to, unfortunately, dig through the, the archives and the jungles and find where we can get parts for this thing so luckily i do have the i do have a hundred percent of the bike i'm not missing anything so with all those parts we have the air box air box lid cover we have one we have one so i don't have everything we have one number plate we have rear fender we have a truck or mud flap um at least i had one to protect that old lanes which i didn't undoubtedly is going to need to be rebuilt um floppy foot pegs just fine we'll do something cool about that but guys um i really just want to introduce it to you tell you what to get excited about and i want to hear your ideas and thoughts down in the description but i was thinking you can just tell me if i'm onto something or not all right i love resto mods with a little tinge a little hat tip to the past yet modern with like some upgrade safety stuff so some brand new excel wheels not in this gold though what about blue okay whoa careful okay don't get mad at me down in the comments i'm thinking like anodized blue like the new yamaha blue on this thing obviously send out the frame to mound house powder coating get them to do this white all over again refinish the tank send the seat out to guts racing have them recover it um new top in bottom in if we can find one or if we have to get this one rebuilt an intake boot. Um, might even throw a smart carb on there too. I have no idea. <laughs> I just have no idea. It's a that's a huge carburetor. Undoubtedly, it's probably like 44 millimeters. Something crazy. I don't know. It is. M I C. Is that Makuni? M I C. When back in the day, is that Makuni carb? I don't know. Guys, um, really excited though to break into this thing, get it running first and then tear it down for its big build. So let's work on that first, get this thing up and running. So I'm gonna, this week, that's my promise to you, is I'm gonna try to find intake boot. I might as well look for just a top-end gasket kit. If I have to buy an entire gasket kit, I will, but a top-end gasket kit so I can mic out that piston, figure out what size we need to go to because undoubtedly this is gonna need to be changed and bored out. But let's start getting this thing back to a running order. I'm really happy to see no coolant in here, but it probably means that we do need water pump seals. I don't know how else this coolant could have just completely left this bike, um, but it is gone. And then we'll hear it pop over. So pumped, excited to have another two-stroke in the family. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, I hope I earned it today from you. And uh, definitely like the video if you like 500s. And if you don't like 500s and don't like the video. So I don't know what good that's going to do you, actually. Just like the video anyways, because if you like dirt bikes and you like old two-strokes especially, this is a place for you. You found a home. Guys, uh, I'm going to cut off right here. It is cold. I got to get back to do my Christmas decorations like I promised my wife I was going to do. Happy Monday to you guys. And I hope... 
I really hope that you had a good Thanksgiving. As we go into the new year here, it's going to be a lot of, uh, but it's still my goal for every Monday to have a drop, uh, a video drop for you guys. And which next week, what are we doing next week? What is, so we're, we're already wrapping on the 89. Oh yeah. The 91 photo here. The 91, I think next week, we're going to try to drop a motor into it, get it running so I can at least store it until we're ready to do a full frame up on it. And uh, I got an 89 that really needs to be put on camera because she's just going to be phenomenal as well. Not the 89 you've already seen, something a little bit different. So anyway, guys, I love every single one of you. We'll see you next Monday. That's a promise. Peace out for now. Bye-bye from the shop garage whatever. Where it's cold. It's really cold. Husqvarna 1. Is this the first one? XP. I bet that's not a CR then if it says XP. I don't know. Extra parts? Extra perfect.